Hello again guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is part one of our Airbus tutorial series and we'll be covering the very important topic of flight planning. I would just like to start the video by saying this is not an exhaustive tutorial on the flight planning process. Obviously uh, there's many different contingencies and uh, permutations that can crop up during any flight plan or any flight planning process and it's uh, simply not possible for us to cover all of these in one video. So for today's flight we're looking at a fairly straightforward flight plan. There's no surprises for us in the NOTAMs and the weather at departure and destination is nice. It's also worth noting that the, uh, the amount of work done by the pilots during the flight planning process very much varies from airline to airline. Obviously for the bigger airlines they'll have their own flight dispatch department. They'll do most of the uh, planning and paperwork for you. And that's the sort of example that we'll be looking at today. For the flight plan itself, I've used a website called Simbrief. For anyone that hasn't heard of Simbrief, I highly recommend checking it out and I'll leave a link in the description for you. But essentially you can go on the website and create yourself real world style flight plans, routes and planning materials for use within Flight Simulator. So in today's video we've just arrived at dispatch, we're now at the uh, dispatch desk, we just picked up our flight plan and we'll uh, discuss the sort of things that we'd be looking at as a crew to aid us in making our fuel decision for the flight. If you do enjoy the video guys please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel that really helps me out and if you have any questions or comments for me please leave them down in the comments section below and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. So before we go through the actual flight plan itself, I thought it might be a uh, good idea to explain what it is briefly that we're actually looking for. So when we go through the documentation, really we're trying to consider everything, particularly with regards to the uh, NOTAMs and the weather. And we're trying to work out whether the company calculated uh, fuel on the flight plan is a reasonable decision for the flight on the day. Specifically, uh, as I say, we're looking at the NOTAMs and the weather for any uh, unserviceabilities at the airfield or any unusual weather conditions that might warrant taking some extra fuel. If we agree with the, uh, the flight plan, then we'll take flight plan fuel, and if we feel that we need more fuel on the day, then we'll uh, calculate that accordingly. Anyway, with that done, as I say, we've just arrived at dispatch, we've picked up the paperwork, and the first thing we'd want to do is check that it is actually the correct paperwork. So today's flight, it's BD289, it's the 21st of July, it's East Midlands to Nice. It's what we're expecting. And we can cross check that along the top here. It's an A320, registration Golf Mike India Delta Yankee. So it is the correct paperwork. The, uh, the rest of this we'll come back to later on. We'll start with the NOTAMs. So here are the NOTAMs. Probably worth mentioning that uh, even on a short haul flight it can be uh, quite common to have many many pages of NOTAMs and for a long haul flight this can be uh, 20, 30, 40 pages of NOTAMs. Obviously for an individual to remember that sort of quantity of information is very difficult particularly when it's written in this sort of a format. So what we're really looking for is the departure, destination and alternate uh, airfields and any en route airfields that we're using. And then the rest of the NOTAMs were given. We're really just building up a uh, bigger picture of what we can expect on the route today. I've already been through the NOTAMs and highlighted all the relevant ones for this flight. So starting with East Midlands, the uh, departure aerodrome today. The only thing I could find there was the uh, apron entrance at Tango is closed. That is relevant to us as we are parked on the main apron and uh, Tango is one of the exits that we could potentially be using. So if we were cleared via uh, Tango by air traffic control we would query that clearance however I would say it's uh, not totally uncommon to get clearances that don't match up with the NOTAMs uh, real life versus the uh, the planning world don't always entirely match up for our destination Nice as you can see it's worth mentioning you, you can get a lot of NOTAMs that don't necessarily apply to you on the flight for example there's a mention here of transponders being operative before requesting startup clearance well, we're only going to request startup clearance on the uh, departure out of Nice, so we don't need to worry about no TAMs like that until the uh, return sector. The ones affecting us today, though, in Nice, we have some uh, stand closures, nothing uh, too serious, although we would be cognizant of those when we're trying to park. Lastly, they've uh, removed a few uh, star arrivals, 
but we haven't planned via either Viva or Bordy, so they won't affect us. Malpensa, again a few stand closures, and then again some stuff relating to various approaches. So for example, runway uh, 35 right for the ILS, there are some limitations on these sectors, distances and altitudes at which we can use it. But none of these no terms actually affect the usability of uh, Milan as our alternate for today. So no terms wise, nothing really there to affect the fuel decision. Coming up to the uh, the weather now. Usually we would have the weather for the uh, entire route and many airfields along the route, but uh, Simbrief only gives us departure, destination and alternate. All three a very nice day today. The actual weather at the moment at East Midlands, the wind 250 at 7 knots. The runway in East Midlands is runway 27, so the wind's almost straight down the runway. It's cab OK, which means cloud and visibility OK. Temperature is 15 degrees and the QNH 1026. The forecast, which possibly will affect us as we're departing at 0730. The wind just swinging around even more towards the west, so that's in our favour. And uh, cab OK. There's a prop 30, which won't affect us outbound, but might affect us on the return. And that's just some broken cloud at 4,500 feet. Not going to cause us any issues. For Nice, again a nice day. Uh, wind 080 at 6. So expecting an arrival onto one of the uh, 04 runways. Visibility above 10 kilometers. There's a few clouds at 3,000 feet, scattered at 3,600 feet. Temperature of 27 degrees, QNH 1020. No significant changes expected. For the forecast, this might affect us. We're expecting to arrive at 0930 Zulu. The wind just swinging around a little more to a southerly. However, probably still expecting a uh, 04 arrival. Cavake, and then their tempo, which doesn't come into effect until much later on today, so that won't affect us. Morpensa, wind 050 at 4, slightly variable. Cavake, 26 degrees. QNH 1020, no significant changes expected. Forecast, again this might affect us. The wind just variable at 5 and still cab OK. So again, nothing in the uh, the weather that would suggest any requirement or need to take any extra fuel. We can head up back to the uh, top of the flight plan now and start going through everything else in detail. Just mention, I've crossed out the engine variant there as uh, the British Midland Airbuses used to use the IAE engine variant, but uh, Simbrief gave us the CFM 56 variant. So there might be a slight discrepancy in the uh, fuel planning given the different engine types. You'll notice here the uh, scheduled time of arrival 0940 and the estimated time of arrival 0938. So it's a very small margin, just two minutes between our estimated time of arrival and the schedule. All we can do there really to try and improve things is uh, try and push back a little bit early from East Midlands. Otherwise it's just going to be a case of requesting direct routings on our way over to Nice to try and cut down on the flight time. The things I've highlighted here become relevant during the, uh, the cockpit setup. For the weights, so the estimated weights for today and the maximum weights that we can accept. Estimated takeoff weight 69.7 tonnes, maximum takeoff weight is 78 tonnes. So you can see we have an 8.3 tonne margin there. Whereas for the landing weight, the uh, estimated landing weight 65.3 tonnes. Whereas the uh, actual maximum landing weight we can accept is 66 tonnes. So there's only a 0.7 tonne margin, which means that today we are landing weight limited. And if we wanted to take any extra fuel, we could only take an extra 0.7 tonnes, which is just a little under 20 minutes worth of fuel in the uh, A320. The flight's been planned at flight level 350 today. These are our fuel figures. We'll come back to those later. This is our routing from East Midlands to Nice, and then our alternate routing over to Marpensa. As I say, we planned at flight level 350. However, maybe uh, there's a possibility that air traffic won't grant us our requested flight level. So we can see here that if we got a flight level change down 2,000 feet, flight level 330, we'd expect to burn an extra 110 kilograms during the flight. Obviously, uh, European flights, the airspace can be quite busy, so we would take this possibility into account during our fuel planning. Weights down here we'll come back to later on. This is the flight plan itself, so we would actually uh, be reading through this very thoroughly when setting up the aircraft. But for now, we're just looking at the flight level and the Mora. So flight level 350, and we can see there are no step climbs throughout the flight, so we're maintaining 350 all the way to destination. 
The Mora, 8,200 feet. This number is basically the highest terrain en route, plus a, uh, an additional safety margin. So if we needed to descend down for any reason en route for any uh, emergencies, the lowest we could descend initially was uh, 8,200 feet. However, I happen to know that the MSA going into Nice is actually higher than this, as there is some uh, terrain also on the arrival. So we'll use the uh, MSA in Nice for any uh, terrain awareness values on the uh, descent. These are the winds for the flight. We just briefly scan through these, just checking there's no dramatic shift in either wind direction or wind speed, as that would indicate uh, possibility of some turbulence. And then the, uh, the cruise temperature, essentially uh, just checking to see there's no sudden increase in cruise temperature, as that might mean we'll uh, struggle to maintain our cruise level. If it's planned, then that's fine. That should be taken into account. But if we climbed for any reason, we'd need to check the temperature in advance to make sure we're not climbing into a a warmer layer which might affect our performance in the cruise. Coming back down through the weather and the no terms. So we can see our flight route for today. We're departing uh, west out of East Midlands, down through the centre of the UK, crossing the uh, southern coast, across the Channel, through the northern coast of France. These two red dots, there are en route alternates for today. So uh, we've got uh, Paris and Lyon. Coming down through central France, down towards the south coast, and then into uh, Nice. If for any reason we were unable to land at Nice today, then we'd probably divert to uh, Malpensa, our nominated alternate. It would just head northeast towards Milan. Next, we can look at the uh, the cruise winds. So this is flight level 340. We're cruising at flight level 350, so this should be quite representative of what we'll get at our flight level. The wind direction, basically the wind is coming from the direction of the uh, the tail of the indicator with the barbs on, so the wind today coming from the west. A black triangle is 50 knots of wind, a long barb is 10 knots of wind, and a short barb is 5 knots of wind. So you can see today we basically have a westerly wind for the entire route of around uh, 40 knots. According to the, uh, the top of the flight plan that equates to being about a 50 knot tailwind throughout the flight. Last but certainly not least, we have the en route terrain. So you can see there is some uh, high terrain towards the end of the flight. These are flight levels, so flight level 50, and uh, that Mora that we just spoke about a minute ago, that's uh, the terrain plus an additional safety margin. That was around 8,000 feet. You can see, as I mentioned, we do have some more terrain on the descent into uh, Nice. So we've looked through the uh, the bulk of the flight plan now. I can't see any reason in the NOTAMs, the weather, or anything else to take any more fuel, but we'll discuss the uh, the fuel figures before we make our fuel decision. So the uh, trip fuel today, that's the fuel we need to get from East Midlands to Nice. That's four and a half tonnes. Contingency fuel, this is usually the 5% of our trip fuel, or roughly uh, 20 minutes. Today they've given us the uh, 20 minutes. Contingency fuel is basically for any unforeseen circumstances, so for example, weather deviation or holding. Alternate fuel, that's the fuel to get us from Nice to Malpensa, that's 1.5 tonnes. And then the final reserve, that's usually a standard figure of 30 minutes, that's the absolute legal minimum amount of fuel we need to be landing with in the, uh, the fuel tanks. And today that's 1.2 tonnes. That gives us a minimum takeoff fuel today of 7,963 kilograms, plus 200 kilos for taxi, which again is a pretty standard figure. That gives us our block fuel today of 8,163 kilograms. This figure up here, this is our minimum diversion fuel. Basically, that's the absolute minimum fuel that we need to be arriving in Nice with. We need to be able to arrive in Nice with uh, our alternate fuel to allow us to get to Malpensa and our final reserve as we need to land in Malpensa with a minimum of 30 minutes of fuel in the tanks. So adding these two together gives us our minimum diversion fuel of 2.6 tonnes. So for the fuel figure today, as I say, there's uh, no aircraft defects, nothing in the NOTAMs or the weather that I can see. We're arriving into uh, Nice with minimum diversion fuel plus 20 minutes. I can't see any reason to take any more fuel. I'll be happy with the uh, block fuel of 8,163 kilograms. If we're both happy with that as a crew, then we would come down to the uh, weights. We'd calculate all these weights ourselves and check that we agree on the numbers. And with all that done, we can then head out to the aircraft. 
So there you go guys, hopefully that gives you a reasonable idea of what we're looking for during the flight planning process. As I say, it's very variable from airline to airline and the flight plan we looked at today is the sort that would have been created in a flight uh, planning department and given straight to the crew in a smaller airline. I uh, suspect they have to do a lot more of the paperwork themselves. Anyway, I hope you found the video useful. Part 2 will uh, head out to the aircraft and we'll uh, run through the setup up to uh, being ready for pushback. I hope you enjoyed the video guys. If you did, please consider again giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. As I say, that really does help me out. And uh, if you have any comments or questions regarding the video or the flight planning process, please leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks very much and I'll see you again soon.